Evangelism is heavily dependent on prayer. A church that does not pray for the territory in which they are domiciled cannot influence the territory. That's why many places you go to in the world, what people call evangelism is church marketing. They take flyers of their church, take handbills of their program, and they are going out to invite people to church. That is not the, 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 the responsibility of the church. The primary responsibility of the church is to be a lampstand in the territory. To shine the light of Jesus. To bring men into the experience of his grace that he procured for us by his blood on the cross. To bring men to the place of salvation. We are supposed to preach the gospel of the kingdom. To get men to get saved. But the gospel of the kingdom is only as potent as the prayer altar of the church. So our fathers in the faith. Every member of the church was a prayer warrior. But we now found out that we thought we were wiser than our fathers. So what we did is that we created prayer department. That some people should not pray. So we have prayer warriors. And now that thing called prayer warrior. Some people wear it as a badge. So we are the warriors in the church. Some of them, when they are walking, self, you, you have to give them chance. Because they are the warriors. You are a civilian. So prayer warrior is, is a thing of pride. So now we, they pray for the church. So many times when you get into their circles, you find things like pride. You find things like lust. You find things like arrogance, unforgiveness. Prayer warrior. Meanwhile, when our fathers began, when you joined the church, you will continue in the doctrine of the apostles. I've shown you that doctrine. The syllabus is what? Christ. You will continue in fellowship. You will continue in breaking of bread from house to house. And then you will continue in what? Prayer. Everybody was initiated into a life of prayer. That's why here, one day we will do 24 hours prayer. Then you will see that that usher that is doing like this to you. When we give him mic, you will now find out that he too, he is he, a man of prayer. Some of us that you are seeing, we are the weakest among the clan. Some that you don't see. Some that you don't see. By the time they roar, their spirits are large. Because everybody here is initiated into the school of prayer. That's the order of the Bible. That's the order of the Bible. So if you are going to progress in your work with God, you must shift from doctrine to what? Practice. And that shift is not imparted. They cannot impart it upon you. Somebody cannot lay hands on you and say, begin to pray now, 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 by fire, by fire. Now you can receive that impartation and you will sleep for 42 hours. Hmm? Your response to doctrine is a deliberate intention to discipline your flesh. That's your response to doctrine. What doctrine is supposed to show you is the priority, the purpose, and the power of prayer. Then what you will do by practice is now to experience it by deliberate decisions. By deliberate decisions. So what do we do with deliberate decisions? You begin to set time schedules. This is why in the block teaching of kingdom life, sure you know there's a block teaching in the Bible, wisdom of kingdom life. That block teaching begins at Matthew 5 and ends in Matthew 7. It's Jesus that taught it. That when you become a member of the kingdom, there is something called kingdom constitution. There is a, a compendium of, of, of expectations that exist for members of the kingdom. And part of the, the expectations that exist is that there is a way a kingdom man is supposed to behave. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Blessed are they that are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So there is an expectation. There's a way to live. He gives us that way. Then in Matthew chapter 6, he now begins to show us 
that apart from Matthew chapter 5, help me Holy Ghost. So you see, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus shows us that there is a way to live to be a witness to the world. In Matthew 5. Your witnessing is to the world. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, he emphasizes that you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. No man lights a candle and puts it under a bush. In verse 15 now, or is it 16? I can't remember. He says, let your light so shine before who? Men. Is it 16 now? 16. So, 16. So, let your light so shine before men that they may see what? Your good works and glorify your father. So, all the things I've been telling you from verse 1, 2, 3, ba 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 ba. The essence is so that your light will do what? Shine. Before who? Men. That they may see your good works and then do what? Glorify your father who is in heaven. He now moves further. He now begins to talk about things like adultery. Adultery begins in the heart. Anger begins in the heart. There is a way to live. If someone comes to take your coat, give him your cloak also. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other. Because in the first instance of kingdom expression, your witness is to who? Men. Are you with me? So you are to bear witness to men. Your light is to shine. So in Matthew chapter 5, he also says that your father in heaven allows the sun to shine on both the wicked and the righteous. So you too, when they persecute you, love them. If you only greet the people that are good to you, what difference is there between you and the unbeliever? He says, so, so that you will be the sons of your father. Are you here? Treat people a certain way so that they will know that indeed this one is the son of his father. He ends that chapter by saying, be ye therefore perfect. Even as what? Your heavenly father is perfect. See how he begins chapter 6. 6 verse 1. 6 verse 1. 6 verse 1. 6 verse 1. Quickly, quickly. Take it. Now he has finished telling you, my God, it's already time. He has finished telling you that. I've not even entered my teaching for today. Mavis, don't be doing these kind of things to me, please. Now, he has not even, he has finished telling you in chapter 5 that your witness is to who? To men. Then he begins chapter 6 and says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before who? Men. men. To be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with who? Now, he now begins to break what he's describing as his charitable deeds. One, he talks about giving. Two, he talks about praying. Three, he talks about what? Fasting. So there's a dimension of your life that is public. But there's a dimension of your life in practice that is what? Secret. This is the balance for the kingdom man. So in chapter 6, go to verse 2 now. Verse 2. He says, therefore, when you do a charitable deed, don't sound the trumpet before you as hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory before men. As surely I say to you, they have their reward. Who are the first people he identifies? Hypocrites. Who is a hypocrite? Who is a hypocrite? Two things. A hypocrite is one whose words are divorced from their conduct. So how they behave does not match the things they say. That's a hypocrite. Number two, a hypocrite is somebody that pretends to be something that they are not. So that they might receive recognition and gain. So they are pretending to be something they are not so that they can receive what? Recognition and gain. So he's saying, don't be like the hypocrites. What they do in the synagogues. Is that they are doing their charitable deeds before men. And what are they looking for? Recognition and gain. So what does he say in verse 3? He says, But when you do a charitable, charitable deed, do not let your hand, right, left hand know what your right hand is doing. Verse 4. 
that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself do what? Rod you open it. So if I'm going to give, say you know that thing that they do on TV. That somebody stands with bundle of mom, money. Mommy, 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 mommy. And you say, oh, mommy is sharing money. And then the person is carrying bundle of money like this. And then somebody holds paper. And on that paper is written, church gave me 50,000. The Bible says, that's how who behave. Hypocrites. Are you with me? Yes, sir. That's scripture. He says, when you do charity, your left hand should not know what your right hand is doing. But you see, the sad thing is, in the body of Christ today, that is how we measure who is a man of God. You come and you say, this person does not know God. They say, have you been able to help people like he helped people? Have you been able to do half of what he did? Meanwhile, Jesus said, if you are operating like that, you are a what? Don't be angry with me. I know to say the word hypocrite is hard, but it's Jesus. It's not me. You can hate the preacher, but love your Bible. Love it. He said, that's how the hypocrite, he says, what happens is that they will get their reward. They get their rewards from men. What is their reward? Recognition from who? Men. Meanwhile, there are dimensions of your life as a kingdom agent, as a member of the kingdom that must be private. One of those dimensions of your life is in your charitable deeds. I learned from my father in the Lord that when I send him a gift, huh, I don't send him a message to say, um, Daddy, I was just moved in the spirit. And the Lord now told me. Then I shared 16 revelations of how the angel of the Lord flew into my room and told me to send money to my father in the Lord. They now say, please confirm that you received the alert. I don't bother. Are you with me? I don't bother to check. Because you see that thing has a subtle underground expectation that you want the person to say, well done. So I don't bother. Because your father who sees where in the secret. Oh, le bolo covelana. Eh? He knows when the thing you are doing, the sacrifice you are making is genuine. He knows. He knows. He knows when the sacrifice is so that you can receive recognition and gain before who? Men. Are you here? Next verse. Verse 5. Verse 5. He now goes to another dimension of your life that is supposed to be private. He says, when you do what? Pray. Don't be like who again? Hypocrites. I don't have time to deal with the other part where it speaks about pagans. We'll deal with that next week. And then when we deal with that, I will now begin to talk about faith in priesthood. You know that's what I was supposed to teach today. I will teach that next week, if I'm around. Faith in priesthood. We'll deal with that. But I have to finish because it's already, it's already seven. He says, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray how? Standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street, that they might be seen by who? By men. As shortly I said to you, they have their verse 6. But you, when you pray, go into where? Your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is where? In the secret place. And your father who sees in the secret will do what? What do you want? So there are three things there. First of all, your father whom you are praying to is where? In the secret place. Second thing is that your father sees where in the secret. And your father who sees in the secret, what will he have? What will happen? He will reward you openly. What is a reward? You know, the first time I heard my father in the Lord teach on this scripture, 
That's the apostle Aaron Mehosai. The first time I heard him teach on this scripture. He said, many people are pursuing prayer answers. Answered. But when you advance in your work with God, you begin to pursue prayer what? Rewards. You know, many people just listen to messages. They don't ask questions. So me, I went to, I went to check. What is a reward? What is a reward? A reward is a future blessing that comes from the hand of God. A reward. 